Hello and welcome to another episode of my quest system videos. I know it's been a long time since the last video was uploaded so let me quickly refresh your memory on what's going on right now. We added some spider enemy classes to our basic game here and if we go over to our NPC, take our quest, we have the hunt template that tells us to kill two spiders and we can left click to launch a basic AOE attack. If we kill both spiders, we complete that goal and the next ones are added. Okay, so we've got our basic hunting template working, but there are two other templates that we haven't done yet. One is the find template and the other one is the talking template. In this video, we will start with the find template and we'll wrap it up in the next video probably. So let's get started. First, let's head over to our widgets folder because we've got that interact widget that we created for our enemy. But we should also be able to use that for our objects that we can pick up in the level. So here it says press E to interact. Let's make the text a variable and call it interact text. Because for our find template we want to have it read press E to pick up. So making that a variable will allow us to change that. Close the interaction widget. Let's go to our blueprints folder. Go to actors. And here we will add a new folder for objects. Open that. Then we'll create a new blueprint class of the type actor. Call that master underscore object and open it up. Let's add a static mesh component. Drag that on top of our default scene root so it becomes the new one. And we will also add a widget component. That we will move up, let's say like 100 units in Z. Space will be screen. Widget class will be interaction widget. And let's scroll down to the collision. We will set it to no collision, uncheck generate overlap events, and finally uncheck is visible. Because we will just set that when our player is nearby. Also let's go to class settings and add the I underscore interactable interface that we created for our NPCs. And we will add a variable here that will be the name of the object. Make that a text. Pile and save. Let's quickly minimize our master object. Open up the third person character. And also go to blueprints, actors and open up the BP quest manager. In our BP quest manager we'll go to the event graph and add custom event which we will call on object found. It will have one input of the type master object class, which will be the found object. Compile and save. Then we'll head over to the third person character. Create a variable here, which will be obtained objects, so all the items that our player has found. Again that will be a master object class, but this time it will be an array. Compile and save. We can actually close the third person character for now. And back in our master object we'll head over to the event graph now. And let's do event begin play first. So we want to set up our widget to actually use our name. So we will drag that in. Get user widget object. Cast to interaction widget. And then we've got access to the variables. So first we will get the name text here and set text to our name variable. Afterwards, we will get the interaction text or interact text. Again, set text. 
And here we can type in something like press, then in square brackets, E to pick up, exclamation mark. Then we have to define what happens when a player is nearby. So right click and search for event, enter, event on enter player radius. Let's also add event on leave player radius. And the last of the events from our interface is event on interact with. For enter and leave, we'll just drag in our widget component here and set visibility. If it enters the player radius, set it to true. If not, set it to false, connect the widget. That should be it for those two. Then when we interact with it, we first want to get obtained objects of a character and add to it. We will add our own class to that. To get that, you'll have to search for get class. For object, type in self, get a reference to self, connect that to the add node. Afterwards, drag off of the character, get the quest manager and call on object found. Again, connect the class of self. And after we did all that, we can destroy actor, pile and save. Now we have to define what happens when we actually find an object, meaning that we have to update all of our sub goals that will be done in our BP quest manager on object found. So what we'll do here is promote that to a variable first so we can work with it, which we will call found object or obtained object, whatever you like. Then we will drag in the current quest actors and run a for each loop. In that first one, we will run a second one for the current goals. Get current goals and run the next for each loop. Connect that to the first one. What we'll do here is break the goal. And off of the type, we will search for equal, equal enum. Check if it's the find quest. And the next condition will be that the goal class equals the found object. So is this a find quest and are we looking for the object that was found? Connect that to the end, add a branch, connect it to the condition, connect the branch to the loop body. And if it's true, go back to the first loop off of the array element, complete sub goal. And we have to get the sub goal index. To do that, you want to drag off of the first array element again and get current indices, current goal indices. Then we'll have to get from that at the array index of a second for each loop and connect that to the sub goal index. That was everything we had to do for that function. It's a bit easier than the on enemy killed one. So we can close the BP quest manager. And let's create our first object. So I'll go into my objects folder and create a new folder for the materials. Here I create a new material, mat underscore object. Double click. If you hold down three and left click, you will get a basic color. Then I will convert that to a parameter. So in my blueprint, I can later change that color, for example, when a player is nearby, make that brighter to indicate that he can pick up the item. You need to give that parameter a name, color for example. Connect it to the base color and I set the default value of that to the hex linear code 070707FF. So something like a dark grayish tone. Also I will hit one and left click to create a basic constant. Set that to 0.2 and connect it to the roughness. If we hit apply now, you will see that our material has become a bit reflective. That should work. It's not about the art here anyways. So close it. Go back to the objects. Right click on mask object. Create child blueprint class. I'll just call my object 
object underscore cone. Open that up. Name will be mystical cone or whatever you want. I'll just use cone because we've got a mesh for that. So select the static mesh and here search for cone. Shape underscore cone. Then we can apply our object material to that, mat underscore object. And to do it so that it changes color, when you're actually nearby, you'll need to go to the event graph. And here on event begin play, we call the parent event begin play. And afterwards, drag in our static mesh, create dynamic material instance. Connect that to the parent begin play. For the source material, drag off of, off of the static mesh again and get material. Add index zero, connect it. Afterwards, we'll promote the return value to a variable called mat instance. Then there are two other events that we have to override. First one is enter player event on enter player radius. Here again, we need to call the parent function first that handles our widget. So right click and add call to parent function. Connect the execution and the character. And afterwards we'll drag in the material instance, set vector parameter value, parameter name is color or whatever you specify. And the value will be something like light blue. So I will use the hex linear code 00151EFF. And the next event that we have to override is event on leaf player radius. Again, add a call to parent function. Connect that up here. Then we can copy over our material instance and set vector parameter value. And here we want to basically reset the value. So 070707 FF. Hit OK. All right, compile, save, and close the object cone. We can drag that into our level now. Maybe somewhere down here so we don't get attacked by our enemies every time we want to pick that up. And we also have to assign our cone to an actual quest to test it. So let's go to the quest actors, quest test one. Element index one is a find quest. The additional name will now be mystical cone. And the goal class will be object cone. Let's also set it up so that we start with our find quest. So we will say that when we complete the find quest, we want to add the hunt goal. So add a following goal indice. Index will be zero. And then you'll need to scroll down to the starting sub goal indices and set that to one. Okay. Now we can play, get our first quest which says find the mystical cone. When we get close to the object, it says mystical cone, press E to pick up. And as you see, the color change. If we hit E to pick that up, you see that we've got the next quest. If I hit J and let's have a look at our journal. Yeah, here it says find the mystical cone was completed. All right, so we've got that basic functionality working. But there is a problem, which is that if you pick up the cone before adding the quest, currently you would have no way of completing that goal. But in the next video, we will fix it so that every time a goal is added, you will check if you already completed the condition for that. And if that's the case, you'll directly complete it. All right, see you in the next video.